Hi everyone, this is Wendy. Welcome to the Aussie YouTube Hoppers. So, just recently I joined a group of Australian YouTube crafters and artists and um, every so often throughout the year they're planning on having a video hop. And each video each hop that we do has a specific theme so we have to kind of like base our projects on that theme and the theme for this month is beautiful Australia wow <laughs> so many things I just love Australia so much I love the beaches I love the bush I love the landscapes and everything else that goes with so it. So I'm thinking that the theme for this month was a little bit difficult for me to actually choose a project based on this theme because there's just so much about Australia that I just mm, love. Based on the theme um, and doing a project, I was just recently tidying up my craft room and I come across these old cards that I have had for quite a while, like a good couple of years, and I thought, wow, the the birds, the birds we have here, here in Australia, some of them are just the most beautiful coloured um, birds that you have seen, like these ones here, the, um, the parrots and our cockatoos, like the pink and the white, and our budgies and the little wrens and everything and I just thought wow okay so my project for the video for the video hop um, based on beautiful Australia and inspired by the colors of our birds I thought okay I want to make some more feathers now it is hot here in Australia at the moment very hot so I have my ceiling fan on if you can hear that in the background and I thought I'm going to play with wool <laughs> yeah <laughs> let's play with wool in the heat <laughs> okay so I'm going to show you how I've been making a few woolen feathers and then at the end I'll just show it you a couple that I have finished based on the colors of our birds this one here I'm going to do black and red this one here is actually I've got a picture of some of the birds just for um, extra inspiration and the first one is the red tailed black cockatoo and I thought okay I've got I wanted to use just the wool I had I didn't want to go out and have to buy anything so I have got some black wool and I have got some red wool and the process is so easy you don't have to have anything fancy. I've got a piece of thick cardboard, which I think Americans overseas call chipboard. I've got that down, and I have this little a needle here that I've just stuck into the top of my board up here, hammered it in so it won't move with that all. <laughs> And all you need is some wool and some sort of round item and I'm going to use just a little jump ring that I have because I've got quite a few of these little jump rings. Okay, so let's get started. The, the middle piece that's coming down, I'm going to do it in like a macrame style. So the center piece of my wool is going to be red because the bottom is going to be the red part of the tail as well. And I just fold this, the center piece is about 12 inches long. I fold it in half, slip it through the jump ring, pull it out a bit, hold the jump ring, and then open up that loop and just pull the two tail bits so that I've just hooked it straight onto the jump ring there and I just put that over my my needle stuck in my board now I do like to have this center piece held down so I'm just going to use a little bit of double-sided tape 
put that down there on my board lift that off and just firmly pull my center bits of wool down and just going to get a bit of this wide sticky tape and just place the sticky tape just down over the ends there so that's pretty firm it's not really tight but it's firm okay and I'm going to start with my black wool first and these pieces for the side pieces they're about six inches long so just going to fold that in half and the process is you slip that half folded piece under there and you've got a loop there like that so the black piece is under the red one then you grab another piece of the black wool fold it in half you lift up that loop slip it in through there hold the ends down here and I said hold the ends Wendy right hold the ends there and you just pull the other ends of the first piece up there and you just pull it out like that so that's what I'm going to be doing now I alternate the way I put the wool under so this black piece is going in through the right side so I've got the loop on the left fold another piece of wool slip it through that loop hold the ends on this side here open up that loop and pull the other ends up through and then just pull it together now alternate the sides so I folded that piece slipped it underneath the main piece down there and the other piece folded in half goes up under that loop holding the ends and then opening up that loop and pulling those ends through so that's just the process and when you alternate it you can always tell what side you've done before because there's like a little bulge on this side here so that means I went in through that way so this time I'm going to go in through this way then you lift up the loop open that one grab the ends hold the ends on either side and just pull so we'll go this way up under there up under hold the ends make sure the ends are both even because they do seem to want to move around a bit and just pull that out there okay I'll just come in a little bit just to show you so you can see it a bit closer so I folded the piece of wool slipped it underneath then folded another piece of wool and that goes in under that loop hold the ends there then you open that loop up there and grab the two ends there and just pull it tight and oh, see I didn't hold those two ends there so I got one a little bit Slip wobbly that in under there so it's underneath the main one down there the straight one fold the wool slip it up under there hold those two ends open up this loop and grab those two ends there and just slip it up and pull okay so I'll do another couple underneath fold slip through hold the ends 
and the wool does like to catch on itself on them on each other but that's okay grab those ends there and slip it up through there. So you can make this as long or as short as you want. I'll just come back out another, a little bit. Okay. Um, for how big you want your woolen feather. Now I'm going to add some of the red for the tail part on my black cockatoo. So we go in under. fold up under there, hold the ends, open that loop and grab the, the ends there and pull. Um, I'm just using wool because that's what I had on hand. You can also use um, crochet cotton um, or other different types of thread just to see how it will turn out but I thought okay I've got quite a bit of wool here and even though it's summer I just still decided yes let's just play with some wool and just one more I think up under through the loop, hold the ends, open that loop, grab the ends and just pull it through. Okay, so that's about the length that I wanted, which I think I'll just measure that roughly so you've got a good idea. So that's about two inches long. Okay, so I've got the length that I want. Now I'm just going to just run my fingers or my fingernails through this just to straighten out any bits of wool that have um, just gone a bit crooked on both sides. Okay and that looks pretty good. Now all I'm going to do, I've got them straight out that way, so all I'm going to do is just hold my hand roughly down on this side here and just cut out about, I suppose, about an inch and a half from the center just to even it, even the sides up because I do cut the, the wool a bit crooked at times. Okay, so I'm going to do it roughly with this side here as well. Just eyeball the length. Okay. So that's the sides straightened up. Now I'm going to grab the, the, the center thread and I'm just going to tie that off in just one little knot like that so that these ones don't slip down any further. And then I'll just snip those to the length either side as well. So this is what you end up with. That's the start of your feather and then it's just a matter of getting either a comb or a brush. I'm actually using one of my granddaughter's Barbie brushes because um, I just found that it just pulls, it separates the wool a bit better. Um, you can leave this down here and hold the center and then just start going like this just to fluff up the wool at the sides but um, me being me I just find it a lot easier if I come up and hold my hand hold this on my hand like that and then just press down with my thumb so it's about my thumbs about a centimeter or half an inch from the center so I will hold the center like that and then just fluff out the wool and this does take a little bit of time and you'll notice that you get some but don't worry about edges. getting any jagged edges because you're going to just trim it up later on but do hold the center um, pretty firmly because that's what will happen see there I pulled that down too far 
and actual one of the threads actually come out. But that's it's not a problem because you can just cut it off. So I'm just fluffing up the edges of the wool. And when I get down to the bottom here, I put my thumb right in the centre because the bits of wool down here just seem to want to go down that way anyway. And then you've got the two ends um, from the centre as well. And while I'm fluffing my wool, in my description box will be the link to the next Aussie lady crafter. So please click on her link and go over and have a look at her project. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a wide variety of projects that will get you inspired to be creative. Okay, so I've nearly fluffed this up. Now I'll put it down there a bit and hold the center with my hand and just keep going around and you just fluff it up to how whatever whatever makes you happy you just keep fluffing okay so that'll do for video purposes now all I do is just lay that there and just trim around the edges and just take off any of that excess fluff and I kind of like um, angle it here and just go around a bit and then just do it to the same here just take off the excess wool at the sides and there's your feather your woolen feather that looks so pretty and I can keep doing this all day <laughs> I just I just love the way these have turned out and then just trim off a bit of the excess just to shape it nicely into a feather shape okay so okay. that's what it looks like you've got a lovely woolen feather and just cut that bit off there and that's where I got the inspiration from from our one of our Australian birds which is the black uh, the red-tailed black cockatoo so you could just imagine this little woolen feather coming from one of those birds, can't you? <laughs> okay. All right, so I'll just come back out again and just move my board out of the way and I'll just show you a few of the other ones that I've done. Um, using the theme Beautiful Australia. So I've got... This one here is the King Parrot and the, the main colours in the King Parrot are the red and the green. So here are the, the feathers that I have done in the red and green. And you can also see that I've added just a few red and green beads on the top of it with a little lobster claw. So that could easily be a wonderful added embellishment on the side of one of your junk journals. You could just hook that onto your handbag. Um, you could just hook it anywhere. Uh, and they just turned out so pretty. So there's the two for my King Parrot. And then 
there was another lot that I've done. This is the rainbow lorikeet. I absolutely adore these birds. We used to have these birds in our front trees when we lived up at Maryborough in Queensland and oh, the trees were just full of them like they made so much noise but they were just so gorgeous that I just love them and I love seeing the colors so it's the color is um, it's sort of like a, a purpley blue but I just wanted to use up the wools that I've had so here I've got the blue red the green and I've got the yellow um, as the tail and the beads also just hanging off the top of them with a lobster So they're cord. my three feathers for the rainbow lorikeet. I'll just put them up there. Um, then ugh, you can't go past the old kookaburra. Our laughing kookaburra. Just an absolutely beautiful bird. And the majority of them are like a speckled brown and white. So I did do a couple of woolen, woolen feathers in just the brown and white. The, this one here I've got brown, white, brown. And this one here I've just got a bit of white like his head and then just brown down here. Um, I haven't got the beads on this these ones yet. Because I uh, actually don't have any brown beads but I will be getting some. So that's the kookaburra. And what I didn't know also... Um, we have a blue winged kookaburra. Isn't that bird just beautiful? I have never ever seen a blue winged kookaburra but after looking it up and reading a little bit about it um, the, the, the majority of sightings for the blue winged have been around the Sydney area. Um, so there's my, my feather, my woolen feather for the blue winged kookaburra um, the bit of the blue I know the blues lighter here but this was the only blue I had so I just went with it so the blue the brown and the white it's gorgeous absolutely gorgeous looking bird um, and that one's got some beads on it and another one of my favorites is the galah um, which is like a pink and white greyish colour and I didn't have any pink and I didn't have any grey but what I did have was a, a pink that the wool was pink and it went to like a bluey grey and then it went to like a yellow so I cut some strips off that and made this one here you can see the colours a bit better there isn't that gorgeous? And that one there, the galah has inspired me to make that little dangle feather. Now also I made Regent Bowerbird which is just a yellow and a black and I, this was the only yellow I had but I thought yes why not go with it. So I've made two for the Regent Bowerbird and then the last one I made, I haven't got any um, beads done on it yet, but I think it is just so pretty. So this is our white kookaburra, um, cockatoo, <laughs> kookaburra, got kookaburra on the brain. I love that blue, blue wing kookaburra. Um, this is our white cockatoo. So he, the majority of him is just white and he has got like a little yellow tuft on his feathers which I'm not I'm not into the proper terminology for, for it I'm sorry but I made three being inspired by the colors of our kookaburra um, cockatoo sorry <laughs> not kookaburra Wendy okay so that's it guys um, don't forget the the next um, person that you can go and watch in the hop will be down in my description box. So please go down um, and have a look at another Aussie 
YouTuber. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a wide variety of that's of it guys, projects. I hope you enjoyed them. I just think these turned out so lovely. I can see them on the side of even the red and green like next year for Christmas. That would be a lovely dangle on the side of a Christmas journal. We have so many <laughs> awesome birds in Australia um, and the colours are just absolutely gorgeous. So that's where I got my inspiration from in this month's theme of A Beautiful Australia. I find our birds so beautiful and they're just all so gorgeous. I just love them. Besides everything else that we have here in Australia as well. <laughs> okay, thanks everyone for watching. Don't forget the link to the next next person will be down in my description box just click on the see more and that'll take you to the next lady in the hop you all have a great day and i'll catch you later bye bye